Howdy, I'm Matt, and in this video we are going to be discussing your questions which came in about the 10,000 mAh 26650 Lion battery pack. Now, if you've been and watched that video, you'll see that there's a whole host of comments down in the comments section underneath this video, uh, or underneath that video, should I say, and that's why I'm making this video, just to be able to answer a whole multitude of the questions which came up uh, quickly and efficiently for you. Uh, so in short, I know many of you have asked, is that is this battery really 10,000 mAh? And the thing is, is that yes it is. I have tested it here on the workbench. I wonder if, yes, I've still got the motor sat here. Uh, I had this motor running at seven amps for over an hour and a half. Uh, and uh, it drew, according to the power meter, it drew over 10,000 mAh from the battery pack, this bat very battery pack here. Uh, and then when recharging it, we put 9,700 and something into it. Uh, so if we, we if we think that's like a 3% error margin uh, going on there. So yes, those cells are... Uh, that they really are 10,000 milliamp fears. Now, uh, before we actually get to your questions, I just wanna go slightly off topic, which is that one thing for you to be aware of is that while the maximum current draw per cell is 20 amps, uh, realistically, I ran that motor at 3.5 amps per cell, so seven amps in total, because Lion batteries really do respond very, very well to a low continuous uh, power draw from them. Uh, and of course, a seven amp, uh, and when you'll see that in the, in the testing video, is that a seven amp current draw from a pack like this is very realistic if you consider a mini talent because typically that model for me at least with the sunny sky x22 2012 16 1250 kv motor uh, is that will cruise in four to five amps and if you encounter uh, maybe a little bit of headway uh, headwind so you need more amps on the way out uh, compared to flying back coming back with a tailwind a seven amp uh, current draw is very, very realistic. In fact, it's slightly over uh, for a mini tannin. So that's why I use 7 amps, uh, just to make it very realistic. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised by the response which the battery gave us. So, yeah, that's always a consideration. Are the batteries what they say they are? And remember, I bought these direct from the Leela Cola uh, site on AliExpress. I put a link in the video description. And remember, they only cost me $4 per cell. And actually today, and that was in July, uh, and checking it today or straight yesterday, uh, they were up to, you can buy 10 of them for $37, something or other. So they're only $3.79 per cell for a 5,000 milliamp per cell. Uh, and that's also hand in hand with a collection of comments which came in is that, yes, the 26650 cell is not as power dense as some of the 18650 cells which are out there. But my answer to you, if you've had that question, uh, is that with these is that they were $3.99 per cell for me, where, where you could easily be paying 10, 12 dollars, or in my case, eight pounds per cell for a good quality 18650 battery. So keep that in the back of your mind. Is that price wise, uh, sorry, power wise, yes, you can do a denser battery uh, for uh, using 18650 batteries, but they will cost you an arm and a leg. Okay, these 2650s are really like that happy medium between price versus density uh, and also weight as well keep that in the back of your mind so not as much of a weight saving perhaps uh, maybe compared to the multi-star batteries but heck come on they were super cheap and remember that customization piece uh, which i mentioned in the main build video you can make this battery pack any shape or size within your imagination and the sensibility of wiring it up so anyway that's answered a lot of the questions. Now, uh, there's one a good question or point which um, Sir Bruce from XJet mentioned in here, which is that one thing to watch out uh, with Lions is the in, in order to get the full capacity, you need to run them down to a much lower voltage than a LiPo. In the case of 3S pack, that could bring the total pack voltage down to less than 7.5 volts, which may upset some of your electronics becks or, or becks which aren't up to, up to scratch. So, so Bruce is absolutely correct there. Uh, in theory, this battery pack will run from anywhere from 2.5 volts per cell all the way up to 4.2 volts per cell. 
Now, what I found in my testing is that when these batteries got down to 3.1 volts per cell, is that they really did just fall off the cliff, literally just went off a cliff, and that was the end when I finished the testing. Uh, now, they say that they'll go all the way down to 2.7 volts. I don't disagree with them that they could potentially go all the way down that far, but in my testing, which I did here a couple of days ago, 3.1 uh, volts and the, the motor just wouldn't, you just, they, the battery cells would, would just not give out any more current uh, than, than what it was giving. So look out for that video later. So do keep that in the back of your mind, is that you could run not only your BAECs down below their threshold, which would like say a 2S limit, for example, but also is that your ESC as well, keep that in the back of your mind, is that you do need to set your ESC so they're on nickel metal hydride. So if you were to run this pack, say all the way down to 12 volts, and that's a 4S pack, uh, is that you could trip your ESC into a fail-safe condition because it hinks the 4S battery, which was a light, it thinks the battery is a LiPo battery, and instead it thinks your LiPo's gone to the end of its life, when in reality you still have loads of um, voltage and power left within the pack. Sorry, to correct them, there's power left within the pack, uh, but the voltage just sagged too far, hence it's cut out, and of course that's danger uh, if you are not close to home. Okay, and that goes hand in hand with my comments uh, previously in, in the build video, which is that you don't go out and fly a squillion miles on a pack like this, without testing it and building up to it, okay? So use your common sense, um, which was, uh, that's my point there, and that's what Sir Bruce is basically saying as well, just go careful, okay? Uh, also moving on there is that there was a comment that they've sold out. Nope, they're still in stock, literally ch uh, checked them yesterday and this morning as well, they're fine. Uh, there is a link in there about, and there were quite a few comments about Matt, about Matt why didn't you spot weld them? I don't have a spot welder, it's not, something which I don't normally make these packs every day and besides it being a project which could be fun to do uh, I have no use for a spot welder so like I said there are companies out there which spot which will spot weld them and they'll do it for you they'll charge you a premium for doing that uh, for me I was very happy in soldering them and going back to the comments which we had in the main video oh there was a really good comment in there from ET about instead you know the nickel metal wire which we were using uh, ET's used the solid mains cable before just stripped that out soldered that up it does solder beautifully I've used it in other projects before you know the really thick stuff mains ca cable uh, a couple of strands of that would work out really really well for a pack like that again if you can't get hold of the nickel strip uh, or it's going to be a long time to get to you. Remember, I think the nickel strip, you can buy it for about £3 from eBay from a Chinese seller uh, or local, at least here in the UK. I think it was 11 99 for a reel. Uh, I paid for that nickel cable and I've made many batteries using that one reel. Uh, moving on into the comments as well. Uh, did you actually test the capacity? Yes, we've already been uncovered that. Uh, and yes, there was that cameo appearance of Mrs. Ragnar Nutsoff. Yes, uh, the Mrs. was in there. Uh, moving on to your questions as well. Oh, there was a nice comment in there from Jan, uh, which is that you can use solder water with a high corrosive rate and make solder in these cells even easier, but don't forget to clean afterwards. So Jan, that's not something which I've done for myself. Uh, I did like just the solder pens. In fact, I've got them just here next to me. Uh, those flux pens, three quid or less off eBay and they work really, really well. Okay, um, now, and there was another note on there, Derek, about the reduced weight. Yeah, compared to the multi-star packs, uh, is that there is a weight advantage, okay, but perhaps it's not as big as one would have hoped, okay, or maybe one would have liked with these 2650 cells, but keep in the back of your mind, uh, is that you would still have to squeeze, okay, so for size, actual physical size, fit in two multi-star, <laughs> those 5200 packs in the front nose of a mini talon would be a huge challenge, whereas this pack actually fits in there very, very easily. I can just slot it, and you know, that's why I've got the Velcro uh, on the top and bottom, well, on the tops and the bottoms, is because I can just sit it in there, and it just fits in there beautifully as well. Uh, there was another comment in there again. You can see the kind of reoccurring comments on there. Uh, is this a Chinese 55, uh, 5000 mini amp or is it a real 5000 mini amp It's a real one. Take it from me. The one cells which I've got, 
I am genuinely really impressed with uh, and they went up to and beyond their specified rating which is happy days. Oh that brings us on talking about ratings that comes on to charging. Now earlier I mentioned that these cells go all the way from 2.75 volts all the way up to 4.2 volts. Now that's the nice thing about these packs you don't need a specialized charger because these cells, the 26650s, will go up to 4.2 volts. It means that you can charge it as any normal LiPo battery, okay? Uh, so with that in the back of your mind, there, there is no need for a specialized charger or the one with the latest firmware and things like that. I've just been, <coughs> excuse me, just been charging this as uh, a normal LiPo battery pack because it will bring it up to 4.2 volts. In fact, the only issue I've had with charging it uh, is the battery cutoff warnings uh, on the actual charger itself. So uh, two, because I got a quad core charger, two of them I found had limits at 5,000 milliamp fears, so they actually cut off short. Uh, so I've set that to 12,000 milliamp fears, so it will be a charge up bigger batteries like this. So yeah, quite a few comments in there. Uh, yes, uh, Nathan Knight, I did make a verbal whoopsie, okay. Uh, three times 5,000 cells don't make a 3S1500, they make a 3S5000 pack. So that was just a slur by myself, apologies for that. Uh, if you want to know the technical specifications of these, um, go and read the manual. The link to these battery cells are in the video description. They're not an affiliate link. I don't. I have no uh, relationship with the supplier. The, the details are right there. I did my research on these before. That's why I bought them. Uh, and for me, to be brutally honest, for $4, well, they're even cheaper now, is an absolute steal. So happy days on that front. Uh, and there was a collection of other ones as well. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll leave it as that. Now, do keep that in the back of your mind. Those sales are cheap. Compared to 18650 batteries, they are not as power dense, okay? But they are cheaper. You get more mini amphers per pence or per cents, okay, for your money. You get more bang for your buck, okay, or more mini amphers for your buck uh, compared to 18650s because the 18650s can, and they're still, even though so they're so widely used, they're still really expensive, especially for the good quality ones. Uh, whereas these, I'm at, like I said, I'm genuinely impressed with these. I, I did a personal best with this battery pack. Uh, and like I said, I'm genuinely impressed with it. It's not one of those battery packs which you're gonna be pulling 40 amps out of. Like I said back at the very beginning, uh, my testing for this battery pack was a continuous draw at seven amps. Uh, and yes, we'll pull more amps than that at takeoff, which is where the maximum kicks in. Uh, and we might need it, say, on an aborted landing. Uh, but for 95, 8% of its flying time in the sky it's, when it's under load uh, is going to be at 7 amps and that means it's 3.5 amps per cell uh, and that's way way below its rating battery packs. These Lion battery packs are not meant, to, not meant to be ragged in like high current loads, they're meant to be ragged over a long period of time. I hope that kind of makes sense to you. So with that said, look out for the video on the testing of this battery pack. Uh, and there was a comment in there from Vortex of welcome to the dark side. I've been using uh, Lion battery packs for a long period of time now. I, like I said, I use them in the Nano Talon. I use 18, a small uh, 4S 18650 battery pack in there. And I, I'm, I've got another set of batteries over there to, to make up just for that, that model itself because they have just worked so well. Oh, one big tip which came in, I can't remember the chap's name, uh, instead of using hot glue on these batteries, you could also use double-sided sellotape. That would also work very well. You know the foam stuff, that would work really, really well because don't forget, when you put the uh, glass fiber tape around the top, that will squish it really, to, uh, really well together and the hot glue then uh, has no chance of melting because you've not used it, you've used the double-sided foam tape instead. Okay, so I thought that was a uh, tip of what special note. So with that said, if you have any questions or comments about these batteries, do go and read the specifications for these batteries. Uh, and my answer to all normal questions are going to be $3.99 per cell or less, which I think is absolute fantastic value for money for ragging the nuts off over a long period of time, not fast and furious. We're talking about endurance in this instance.
So with that said, for myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, again, a heads up, apologies for the audio and maybe the video quality on this one. I'm having to use my iPad. Uh, the Sony camera is just basically a write-off, so I'm waiting for Black Friday to go and buy a new one uh, and we'll get ourselves a 4K camera. But in the interim, I'm doing the best I can with a mobile phone and an iPad. And as always, from myself, Matt, a big thank you to you for taking the time to watch this episode and I'll see you again shortly. Cheerios!